Hi, everyone. I'm Carrie Glidehurst. I'm the Director of Radiation Oncology Physics at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And I'm here today with my co-host, Victoria Yu from Memorial Sloan Kettering. Hi, Victoria. And we're here to uh, share uh, the greatest hits of MR and RT in medical physics. And in this sense, it's the Journal of Medical Physics. Uh, Victoria? Hi, everyone. Again, I'm Victoria Yu. Um, I'm currently at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. Um, it's an honor to be able to introduce um, the top, the greatest hits in MR and RT. So this virtual issue is a compilation of the significant original scientific papers and, and on the topic of MR and RT that is published here in medical physics. And the way we selected papers is a, a combination of uh, various topics, but it arranges from historic classics to some landmark publications and MR simulation for radiation therapy, and then uh, also some of the latest publications that uh, feature the newest hot topics. So we hope this uh, virtual issue will give all the readers the opportunity to reflect on the developments in MR and RT, all the things we accomplished in these uh, short period of time and um, also uh, gain some insights on the new developments. Great, thanks so much, Victoria. So I'll kick it off with track one. Um, the first selection is an oldie but a goodie. This is from all the way back in 1996, uh, an article by Dr. Uh, Shank, it's a review article, and it's the role of magnetic susceptibility in MRI uh, and MR compatibility of the first and second kind. So uh, this is one of the very first publications in MRI in medical physics, uh, has a whopping 905 citations. So we really felt we needed to include it, still remains a really great reference uh, for any library. Uh, Victoria, with the next one. The next one I'm introducing is radiation therapy dosimetry using magnetic resonant imaging of polymer gels. Um, might sound very unrelated when we're saying MR and RT. However, interestingly, the first paper that had uh, any, any reference of combining MR and radiation therapy is actually on gel dosimetry with MRI. So that's why um, we included this uh, landmark paper. It's also um, introduced in 1996. Yeah, hard to believe it. 1996 is when we first had the first MR and RT paper, and then it went to a dosimetry gel paper. So it was pretty interesting to dig out over the years. Um, so the next one came from uh, 2009. So now we're getting into the 2000s. Um, so bring all your boy band trivia. Um, so this one was by uh, Gino Falone's group, a uh, really important work looking at the first MR images during mega voltage photon irradiation from a prototype MR Linux. So this is really one of the first MR Linux papers, uh, which we know led way to a lot of, of other papers in the future, but a uh, really important work um, and we look forward to seeing more come out from that group. Um, and then uh, I have the next one too, also in 2009. Uh, so this one uh, is by uh, uh, Leslie Baldwin uh, and also from Gino Falone's group. Uh, and this is a two-step scheme for distortion rectif rectification for MRI. Uh, so this one is a really important work. Uh, I use this pretty regularly in a lot of my research and clinical work for our uh, gradient nonlinearity assessments in our magnets. And so uh, it's really one of the first distortion papers and has really sound science uh, and remains a really strong reference. And Victoria with the next one. The next one I'm introducing here, four-dimensional magnetic resonance imaging using image-based respiratory surrogate, a feasibility study. So um, when exploring the topics on MRI and RT, one of the main topics was 4D MRI, and this one was selected because it's uh, the most highly cited one. So this is um, from Dr. Jing Kai from Duke University. Um, so this, uh, this work is the first one that featured um, uh, the use of an uh, image uh, um, patient volume based surrogate instead of any external or navigation surrogate as a, as a way to incorporate respiratory gating in 4D MRI. So we thought that was a good reference to be included. Yeah. Yeah, that's really one of many papers that came out of that group in 40 MRI, but one of the first. Yeah. Um, so the next one that we selected was the characterization of tissue magnetic susceptibility distortions for MR-guided RT. 
This is from Teo Stanescu up at PMH uh, and colleagues. Uh, and this is really one of these great simulation papers that talk about the influences of the magnetic susceptibility and the size of the cavity and the different material effects and what we can see in our MR and RT images. So a lot of these principles apply and they are a really good fundamental paper um, published in 2012. Uh, the next paper um, kind of switches gears, but we liked having a little bit of diversity in the selections. Uh, this comes from um, Paulus et al. And it's looking at uh, integration of PET MRI hybrid imaging into treatment planning. So this was published in 2014. And uh, we were really excited about seeing this work. You know, this is one of many that are to come. PET MRI is a very hot topic. We're seeing a lot in synthetic CT correction from MR data um, and a lot of really interesting work coming up. So we think we'll be seeing a lot more of it. And so we thought it was good to, to feature this kind of uh, initial work uh, by that group. Um, along those same lines, uh, some of the really great fundamental work in MR simulation presented out of Medical College of Wisconsin, Eric Paulson and colleagues, uh, published in 2015, one of the very first comprehensive reports on MR sim uh, in radiation oncology for external beam radiation treatment planning. So um, Eric Paulson and I just uh, published our task group 284 and a lot of the work um, that was shared in this initial paper was highly relevant in our latest task group publication. And uh, just really, really great comprehensive work on um, looking at coil configurations, patient setups, distortion assessment. So there's a lot of good uh, information there for kind of those that are new to the MR sim world uh, and uh, stay tuned for the task group coming your way. Um, yeah. Victoria, uh, you're up next. Yep. Uh, so the next one I'll be introducing is longitudinal diffusion MRI for treatment response assessment, preliminary experience using an MR guided tricobalt 60 radiotherapy system. So um, this is um, uh, from Dr. Yingli Yang, well, one of my former colleagues at uh, UCLA. Great team, great group there. Um, so this is published in 2016. It's one of the first publications that um, looked at low field, uh, being able to do low field diffusion weighted imaging on uh, MR guided system, V-Ray in particular. Um, so the reason why this is so exciting is because first of all, low field is difficult and they did a great job in being able to re uh, robustly track um, the uh, the ADC values for a variety of patients. Uh, and also um, the, the opportunity of MR, or MR guided system gives uh, that new avenue of being able to get multiple uh, time points of diffusion mapping. So that kind of introduced that um, very exciting avenue that uh, MR guided systems give in treatment response systems. Yeah, definitely. You know, that longitudinal imaging is so valuable. You know, one of the things we don't know quite what's actionable or not, but, you know, I think there's more to come on that. A lot of really good work coming out of UCLA uh, looking at that, that DWI. The next paper is uh, multi-center validation of prostate tumor localization using multi-parametric MRI and prior knowledge. So this work is um, from uh, NKI, uh, Dr. Vanderhee. Um, so this, uh, this was a very um, comprehensive analysis on um, combining uh, multiple features from, um, from multiple centers on prostate cancer patients. So this included a DC MRI, dynamic weighted uh, MRI, and also um, just the T2 weighted and uh, generated lots of features um, from that. And the main thing that they also added and had a prior knowledge um, mapping of the um, probability map of uh, tumor occurrence in the prostate. So that prior knowledge helped increase the uh, distinguishability of the uh, tumor itself. So it achieved a very, very nice uh, results. And the main interesting um, part of this is actually the ground truth was um, the, uh, the entire prostate biopsy slides, which I thought was a really um, comprehensive evaluation. Um, mm -hmm. So that's why we picked this great paper. Yeah, it's so valuable to have those 
correlates with pathology, but it's so hard to do. So kudos to the study group for that. And also being multi-center, also really hard to do. So hats off to that group and that team for, for putting it together. Um, so the next uh, paper is from 2017 uh, from Zhao Han. And uh, this is one of the very first synthetic CT uh, papers from MR data using uh, deep convolutional neural networks. And so this one has, despite being only published three years ago, has over 190 citations. And I know I cite, cite it often myself as one of the first real uh, you know, deep learning implementations and really highly accurate synthetic CT generated in seconds. So there's a lot of uh, potential. We've seen a lot of um, different uh, variations come up over the years uh, in this method, but there is definitely one of the very first papers um, and, and well deserving to be on our list. Next is a Monte Carlo study of ionization chamber magnetic field correction factors as a function of angle and beam quality. This is by um, Malkov and Rogers. Um, this is um, a landmark work on uh, characterizing all the um, dosimetry um, properties of various ion chambers at, for reference dosimetry measurements in consideration of the magnetic field. So the, um, it's a very comprehensive and included the uh, simulated this scenario for both the Unity uh, MRLINAC uh, same energy, 7 MV and uh, 1.5 Tesla, and also for a view rate system of 0.35 T. So uh, this will re remain a very, very useful reference for everyone in the MR, MR, MR guided world. So, um, okay. The next is, um, Cardiac substructure segmentation with deep learning for improved cardiac sparing. So this is a great paper by uh, Eric Morris and also Carrie Gladhurst here. Um, it's um, a really impressive paper that um, took a pair of uh, MR, MR cardiac imaging and paired, paired it with a CT, non-contrast CT for deep learning training, and then was able to do, have very high performance uh, segmentation of uh, very um, uh, 12 different uh, cardiac substructures with really great accuracy. Um, so this really holds the promise of being able to uh, do these cardiac con uh, cardiac structure contouring for future radio radiotherapy planning. So one of the new and hot topics. So yeah, um, one other thing, you know, what I like about my own paper, but uh, my students' paper, I should say, Eric Morris. Uh, but really, it's about what MRI enables you to do, and that allows you to have, you know, better segmentation. And so we'd be remiss if we didn't include, you know, a segmentation work uh, and also incorporating deep learning, I think. Um, so it, it helps. It's, it's my own paper that I do love, I, but it, we know cardiac substructures are going to be uh, even more important in the future in, in planning. So we wanted to make sure we touched on uh, the cardiology component. Speaking of hot topics, here's another one. Another hot topic is initial assessment of 3D magnetic resonance fingerprinting towards quantitative brain imaging for radiotherapy. So uh, as we, uh, MR fingerprinting is a new and hot topic even in the diagnostic world where a, a brand new a, a way of acquiring images allow for a simultaneous generation of quantitative imaging maps. Um, so this is the first evaluation in medical general medical physics that focused uh, specifically for radiotherapy applications. So um, this paper uh, included um, the optimizes the sequence on um, radiotherapy setup coil setup and had a very extensive repeatability variability analysis on uh, various scanners and um, phantoms as well. So we thought this great new and hot topic is very exciting. Yeah, and that was from uh, Lou et al, right? <laughs> Lou et al. <laughs> and speaking of Lou, um, our 15th paper selection is also from uh, Dr. Paul Lou and uh, Paul Keel's group out in Australia. Um, and so our final selection, uh, the first experimental investigation of simultaneously tracking two moving targets, moving independently on in an MR using 
MR Linux using MRI and MLC tracking. So, um, you know, we know that our patients are coming back and they have, might have multiple tumors um, working in, in different directions. And so this is some really uh, premier work under early access uh, just in November of 2020. Uh, also received a Best in Physics Award at the 2020 annual meeting. And so this is going to be really important work when we start thinking about truly real-time adaptation, uh, you know, real-time on the fly, you know, MLC tracking of moving targets, not just one target, but multiple targets. So um, stay tuned for more really great work out of uh, the ImageX team and Australia group. It's going to be uh, impressive, I'm sure. Um, so Victoria, do you think I should tell them about our two secret tracks that we had? What? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, no record or, you know, uh, greatest hits is complete without some secret tracks. Um, and so, you know, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention some of the really early work uh, published back in 2005 and 2006 on the very first um, MR guided external beam system. So Dempsey et al. presented at uh, AAPM in 2006 uh, on their real-time MR guided and then um, beat very, very narrowly with the uh, pr presentation by Jan Lagendijk and Boss Raymakers and colleagues back in 2005. And that was using the in-room magnetic resonance image guided uh, radiation therapy. So um, while we don't have full papers to, uh, to contribute, you know, we really think that this is an important topic and we really wanna encourage our authors to um, consider to submit their full papers to medical physics um, and to really allow us to all uh, gain from the knowledge and the research that has been conducted. Um, so with that, I wanted to thank Victoria for joining me in putting this virtual issue together. Uh, it's been really fun working with you. Yeah. And um, do you have any other things you wanna add? It's just pretty amazing how much has happened since 2006, and we're really, really, we're all just very excited to see the new developments in the future. Yeah, so I look forward, Victoria, from seeing more of your work in medical physics. And uh, th thanks, everyone, uh, for joining us today, and take a look at those papers. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.